Hello friends, this is Jim with Science Talk. Um, this one here I just want to discuss with you as to this question here. Why do paleontologists go as far as classifying birds as dinosaurs? Because that's what they are. When you look at the, the evolutionary characteristics and traits of birds, Birds are really, in essence, modern-day dinosaurs. Now, most of the dinosaurs did go extinct. There was one group that survived, the group derived from the theropods. Okay, this is, I'll scroll down, you can see the whole uh, image in a moment, but this is a velociraptor, which is a non-avian theropod. So, if you look at this illustration here, okay, you can see that it's, it's covered in feathers, got all those nasty teeth. When you compare that to the Jurassic Park films, it looks more lizardly, lizard-like in those films when that's not, as we now know, is not accurate. We've had more information, more discoveries to ascertain that they did have feathers covering them. Basically, there's been some fossilized skin found and in the fossilized skin, you can see uh, protuberances on the skin itself where feather attachments would have been. And then you look at this, you can, of course, you can see that uh, the killing claw that they're noted for and so on, a couple uh, digits on their arms uh, with the feathers on there. So uh, that's kind of a, what we now think Velociraptor look like. More on this later. What about uh, Abamemus? Okay. This is Abamemus. Now, it's hard to believe that's a dinosaur. It looks more like a bird. Right? It looks like it's got a, a beak here and a tail with wings. So if you look closely, there's a, uh, well, I don't know what's, but right where the black arrow tip there, that appears to be a digit uh, that is on the wing or the forearm. A lot of the theropods, when we look at birds today, they have the wing. We don't see any digits coming off the wings like we do in some of the earlier specimens. Uh, there, I have some pictures of uh, skeletons to, that will illustrate that better. And then we have the house caraptor, which uh, kind of looks like a surface bird, or well, something like uh, a organzer or of that sort. But you notice this very long tail, and that's kind of the a, uh, a feature that dinosaurs had. They had a long tail, and that by that I mean the presence of a long caudal, you know, a whole bunch of caudal vertebrae. Birds nowadays, the caudal vertebrae has shrunk into what's called a pigo style. So, yes, there's some birds that appear to have a long tail. That's plumage. That's the feathers, very long feathers. Think peacock and so forth. If you go back up here, this long tail here is caudal vertebrae going down the length of it. So, that's kind of a difference between, you know, if I looked at a dinosaur then and a dinosaur today, the dinosaur today called birds has the shrunken, reduced caudal vertebrae into a pigle style. So that's uh, Halcoraptor. And here's Microraptor. Microraptor, you can clearly see the, the digits on the wings right here, They're covered in feathers. This one has an open mouth, and I don't know if it really shows up here on this video, but those are teeth in the lower jaw. Other than that, it doesn't look like a bird. It looks very similar to a bird. And uh, I got away on me. Hang on. Then we have the sign uh, Northosaurus. Sino is a reference to China, basically uh, indicating these uh, specimens were found in China. So sign Ornithosaurus. And if you look at this, okay, this is an older specimen from uh, 
years before. Very long tail, covered in feathers. You can see clearly see the teeth on this jaw. You can see the uh, digits on its foreleg. But it is older than the specimens I've uh, have shown. So now, if you want to compare this illustration to a velociraptor, which did come later, and why is this thing jumping around on me? So there, kind of very similar looking, right? Long tail, right? is that killer claw? And that kind of thing. Put a leathery skin on it, and you got the Velociraptor of the Jurassic Park movies. But now here's the interesting thing. This is a featherless chicken. Looks really similar, doesn't it? Now let's take a look at the, the feet of a bird. You know, if you did not notice the scale here, right, it could be any kind of bird. This is a foot of a bird. It could also be a foot of a T-Rex. And here's another, it's not a good photo, but you can see the claws here and, and so forth. And uh, look at the, uh, the Watson's uh, uh, arms. And uh, it's di this illustration is difficult, but you can see there's a, appears to be a, a digit there. It might be a digit protruding here. But you can see it's covered in feathers. And if we look at the skeleton, that's coming up soon. But here, yeah, this is another, uh, this is probably a better illustration. If you look at the juvenile here, you can clearly see some uh, digits right there. But, I mean, look at that. that kind of a bird. It's got beaks and all that kind of stuff. And there's another illustration. You can see there's the hind feet, there's the, the four feet with the digits. Here's some skeletal uh, set up here. So we have uh, on the this side here, the far left, that's Archaeopteryx. We see the digits. Right, here's your carpal bones, right? Uh, let's see. That looks like the uh, part of the radius. That's probably the ulna. And uh, you can see how the, the feathers come off of uh, uh, attachment points. And so these are the phalanges right here. This would be the distal phalange, the proximal phalange. Quality, like our nails. You see that there? This is the Hoatzin, a little reduced. Right? And then here's the Martin Pigeon, where all the digits are have been hidden as far as their expressions go. So, and then uh, we'll skip the next bunch of stuff here. To, I don't consider that to be overly important. But we do know that the size of the birds have a decrease. I did a video that's on uh, exclusive for my Patreon subscribers, uh, a lengthy video where I discuss how uh, dinosaurs shrunk in becoming birds. So um, that's uh, found on my Patreon page, which you'll learn more about at the end of this video. So, uh, kind of a poor illustration of a T-Rex, kind of silly looking, but there's the T-Rex there. They're trying to put feathers on the T-Rex is what they're trying to do. And uh, as far as I am aware of, I have not seen any evidence that T-Rex is covered in feathers, though it may not be an unreasonable speculation.
So of course, here's some lovely pictures of dinosaurs. <coughs> and uh, excuse me on that one. And look at the feet, right? Yeah, a nice little crest there. Yeah, look at those feet. I think that's a cassowary. Now, so you're going to call birds dinosaurs, but what about fees? Okay, this is a sauropod. Right? Like, a, like an abatosaurus or something. Of course, we've got stego. And we have triceratops. Now, the interesting thing is the, the, uh, the sauropods had a lizard, uh, the sauritians, they had a lizard-shaped hip. Basically, the position of the ilium, the pubis bones. Um, basically, they're at angles. Stego and Triceratops had, were ornithians. They had bird-shaped hips, where the ilium pubis were kind of parallel. So that, that type of pelvis evolved twice. It evolved once in the ornithian line, and then the second time when the theropods, in the becoming birds, also developed the bird-shaped hip, where the ilium and the pubis are parallel. So now, I want to take a look at this phylogenetic tree. And this is what I was referring to, the Sauritia and the Ornitia. You can see the, the angle of the pubis bone okay. going, going parallel, going at an angle here. Now, this stem here, Okay, is will eventually go back to what's called the archosaur. The archosaur gave rise to the crocodilians, the uh, pteranodons or pterodactyls, uh, and then these two branches. So the archosaurs gave rise to four major branches of uh, organism: the Sauritia, Ornitia, the crocodilians, the um, pterodons or pterodactyls. And if we look at this here, okay. Uh, Ceratosauria, Allosauridia, Deinonychosauria. This is the, the group from which Vel uh, Velociraptor arises from. And we can see some, uh, can't quite read some of the prosauropoda sauropods here, stego and chylosaurs and ankylosaurs, and uh, pachycephalosauria, guys that have big dome heads and just wanted to bash everything. And then ceratopia, like the ceratopians, the triceratops. <clears throat> this, of course, uh, you know, we, we start out in the Triassic, going to the Jurassic and Cretaceous, early and late. And as we can see, we, the birds start arising in the late Jurassic. The lines can be traced all the way back, but we start seeing it in earnest, starting to see the diversity increasing in the late Jurassic. Now we have Manoraptorians, which is a, a branching here, and Tetanuri, uh, and so on. So now, this is a skeleton of Archaeopteryx. Okay. Large bird socket, okay, has jaws, has teeth, has caudal vertebrae. You can see the digits clearly on the four limbs. Now, Archaeopteryx is a, literally means ancient wing. It's not the first bird. That's the latest scientific thinking. It's not the first bird. It's birds who appear 10 to 15 million years before. The death, even though it has teeth, even though it has developed pants, long bony tail, it still is a bird. May not look like modern birds, but still like a bird. So, being toothless, handless, and almost tailless are not universal characteristics among the group Avialae. And these characteristics were not short lived, they persisted many years, many millions of years. This is the tooth skull of the bird Hesperonis, who lived 70 million years after Archaeopteryx. 
Look at the teeth there. Hesperonis is believed to be a fish hunting critter, much like Merganser's. I can see these uh, long teeth there being able to grab fish and hold on to them. That's Hesperonis, an ancient type of bird. Then among the non avian uh, Dino nitrosaurs, the closest relatives of birds are troodontids. Troodontids. So troodontids kind of look like these guys. You see that bit of a sickle claw, long tail. Or another one of these. And uh, here, what I want to look at is the uh, troodontid skeleton. You can see now, you can see the uh, furcula here, which is uh, connects the collarbones, and it has a lot of attachment. It helps stabilize uh, what's called a pectoral girdle, and give the uh, front limb some strength. Now, if the bird uh, flies, then we'll also see a sternum that has what we call a carina on it, which is a, a deep protrusion, like a keel, where large, powerful flight muscles would attach. <clears throat> and of course, here's Archaeopteryx again. You can see the similarities between the two. So, um, Birds are really dinosaurs. Uh, Professor Robert Bacher, uh, gosh, I guess it's been 30 years now, uh, he wrote a book called The Dinosaur Heresies. And in the book, he argued for reclassification, where he basically says he wants to have uh, class dinosauria and then subclasses. So when you look at the... Uh, uh, classification scheme you have phylum which is uh, you know the biggest encompassing uh, grouping of uh, organisms and then underneath that you start having uh, you know, maybe sub phylums or uh, you know other side branches and that kind of stuff so if you look at the classification scheme the most specific is the species name then you have the genus name, and then you have the family name. And as we were mentioning, it's a species, genus, family, then comes order. As we're mentioning this, the number of organisms that it encompasses increases. So you have species, genus, family, order, then we have class and phylum. So we could have uh, the phylum vertebrata, okay, well, phylum chordate with subphylum vertebrata, okay, so uh, chordates would include the uh, urochordates, the uh, hemichordates, uh, and, and so on, cephalochordates, and a whole bunch of organisms there. These are organisms that have a uh, notochord, and that's pretty much it, Whereas in the vertebrates, the notochord gets replaced by the spinal column, the actual vertebral bones. So under the uh, subphylum vertebrata, we now have a subclass. And right now we have typically amphibian, uh, reptiles, mammals, birds. And of course, there's the fish, teleos, uh, cartilage. Uh, Chondrosti, the cartilaginous fish, Teleosa bony fish, and so on. But we have those uh, classifications for uh, fish. Well, Dr. Bakker has proposed that instead of having class aves, bird, that we have class dinosauria, and then we have basically Saurischia, Ornitia, and aves. That's his uh, recommendation that we redefine that and put birds as a subclass because they definitely arose from dinosaurs. So uh, it's an interesting uh, idea. 
And uh, like everything in science, sometimes these things take time. One other note, it has been done that they've taken chicken embryos and they tweak the genes that they know control these things Basically, what did they tweak? They tweak genes that are typically in the off condition to be activated. And what happened? As the organisms was developing in the eggs, the, t the tail was elongating. It had a beak, not bills, with teeth in them. So yes, birds do retain the dinosaurian ancestral DNA direct link to it. So next time you're looking at chickens running around in the yard, think, hello, my dinosaur friend. Anyway, I just, uh, just a little story I wanted to share with you. Um, hope you found it interesting. We'll talk again. Hey folks, just a reminder to please subscribe and click the bell so you know when I drop a video. Please share my videos, please tell others of my channel and of the work that I do. I also hope that you will consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash science talk with Jim Massa, where from time to time I upload videos there exclusively for my patron subscribers. Details in the description box below. Thanks.